What is going on YouTube? This is Vice speaking and welcome back to part three of the Dragon Quest 8 playthrough. Guys, in the last episode, man, we had about a million tutorials, but that's just the way it's got to be at the start of the playthrough. In this episode, I'm meeting you guys in February because I just want to run you through um, updates. There's a lot of updates. A lot. <laughs> First of all, armor and weapons and stuff like that. I've bought um, new armor for Vyas. As you can see, he has another armor, another hat, and another shield. All leather. Now, Yangus, on the other hand, has boxer shorts, which I found in a chest. A leather hat and a leather shield as well. Still has an open club. And, most importantly, as you can see there, we have a lot more experience. We are in level 7. I did a lot of grinding between episodes, and I'll usually give you this update at the start of an episode because... This game sometimes requires a lot of grinding, and for the and for the Waterfall Cave, we've got to be up to a certain level. So, now, at the bottom of this uh, of this uh, menu looking thing, you can see it says swords, spears, boomerangs, fists, and courage. Um, it's time to talk about. Well, I don't know what you just the types of weapons you can use. You you basically have options. You can choose the route you want to take. You can focus your skills in swords, spears, boomerangs. You can not use a weapon, or you can even do this, uh, everybody has their own little courage thing. Like, Yangus has humanity, he has clubs and scythes. Now for this, let's play. I'm gonna be going with spears and axes for Vice and Yangus, respectively. Because I think they set you up for the, uh... Well, I don't know, they, they give you the easiest time of it. I mean, clubs for Yangus are like, yeah, scythes are used for money type stuffs. Boomerangs are weaker, but they hit all the enemies on the field. Swords are sort of average. Spears are special. We'll get into them. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I actually did some grinding in the Waterfall Cave, just for the stronger enemies and better experience. But yes, for now, I'm going to sleep in the inn, and I'm actually going to meet you guys. If you remember from the last episode, I'm going to meet you in the Fork in the Road, where south is the Waterfall Cave. Um, but we actually turned and went to that tree. You remember? Because we're going there, okay? I'm cutting away. Oh, goodness. Oh, man. I have to put this part in. We've got well, one more count. We've got our second count for the beefcake counter. You never got to see the first one because the counter didn't exist then. But come on, man. We've got to talk to <laughs> Outside town, there are some monsters you'll always find hanging about in the same place. They're all tough ones to beat. If you want to take them on, you better prepare yourself for a fight. If you're getting beaten too bad, don't be afraid to flee. That takes guts too. Very wise, very wise. I was just about to go to the item shop, pick up some medicinal herbs and chimera wings, but I'm gonna meet you guys where I said I'd meet you, okay? By the way, I, I well actually we're pretty much here, so I guess, yeah, this is perfect. I was like, I, I don't mean to put another cut in, but just wanted to mention, if you ever see any animals in the overworld, you actually can interact with all of them. Now there are cats walking around, sometimes they'll just meow. The sheep will give you a little bad. If you ever see cows, make sure you talk to them because they can actually give you milk. Fun fact. Um, if you didn't know that, that is very, uh, it would be very useful. So from this point, I'm gonna continue south and I'm gonna show you guys the way to the waterfall cave. We are cutting out battles. Let's get a move on. Now, here we are. This is the entrance to the waterfall cave. Now, what I'm about to do is optional, but if you are uh, willing to, you can actually climb this waterfall mountain, and there is a hut on top. You can speak to a man. He will send you on a quest to retrieve something that is next to that um, the reddish-orange tree that we saw in the last episode. If you do that, your reward, I believe, will be eight pieces of plain cheese. Now, you, that might sound crazy to you, but it actually is very useful uh, more later than now. But that is an option if you want to do it. I don't think I'm going to show that, only because we know where both of these locations are now. So I say we jump into this waterfall cave, man. First dungeon of the game. Let's get it. And you get the nice, creepy, ambient cave music, man. One of Sugiyama's best. Um, fun fact, in previous games, I believe, every time you go down a floor, the um, key of the song that plays goes down by one half step. Um, very cool detail. So like at the when you get to the lowest of the lowest floors, it just sounds so slow and deep. I just had to throw that in there. Anyways, let's get moving. 
Ooh, uh, also warning, there are the, the enemies in here are much stronger than outside. So that's why I'm level 7. Like, you, you gotta be prepared. Because things get pretty serious from this point on, alright? Got a chest here, and if I'm not mistaken, yes, it is the map of the waterfall cave. That's gonna come in real handy, because otherwise, um, we wouldn't be too certain about where we are going. Now here, we're gonna want to take the um, the uh, oh the western path. I was gonna say east, but the right path, pretty much. There's some guy walking around. Now, what the heck are you doing in here? I came to look at the waterfall when I stumbled upon this cave. A waterfall cave. It's so intriguing. I was trying to explore, but I've gone and got myself completely lost. What you need, my friend, is a map. I'm sorry I can't share mine, though. We've got a few chests over here. A chimera wing, that's awesome. Medicinal, <laughs> uh, <bleh>, medicinal herb, <laughs> and a leather hat. Dang it! Well, I guess I'm gonna be selling that one. Anyways, let's keep going. Apparently there's a hammer hood guarding this uh broken up doorway it seems. What the heck are you doing? Well, well, you must really be brave to come up and talk to me like this. A man that looked like a peddler came along earlier, but when he saw me he ran away without saying a word. Anyway, as you've probably realized, you'll have to fight me if you want to go any further. What do you think? Brave enough for that, are you? Um, yeah, I don't see why not. R really? You are brave. That means you must be a good fighter. I know. In recognition of your bravery, I'm going to let you through. Off you go. Be careful now. Now, um, another fun fact. If you want to fight this guy, you actually can by just talking to him again and clicking a few yeses and noes. He, yeah, he'll, he'll have to prove himself, but he's not that tough to beat. I'm not going to do it for the sake of keeping my HP up high. Um, so I'm going to keep going for now. Now, to proceed further, um, you're going to want to go right at this fork. I'm going to go left because there is an optional treasure that you really will want to, you know, make the detour for no, uh, under normal circumstances. So that's what I'm going to go for now. There's also a slime hopping around. <laughs> Interesting. Guess what? This passage is a dead end. Do you believe me? Um, I mean... Yeah. Yay, then I'll tell you something good. It is a dead end, but there's a treasure chest up there. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's your hint. I actually didn't know he, uh, he told you that. And it is a copper sword. Now, you might have been wondering why I didn't actually buy any new weapons for Vice, or at least Vice, also Yangus. Um, that is because I knew that this copper sword would be here. And I didn't particularly feel like wasting money 
when I could just get this one. Now, you do have to work for it. You got to go pretty far, fight some enemies. But in my opinion, it's absolutely worth it, man. Um, so our attack was 25. We're going to go up to... What is our attack now? 30. That's a, that's a big increase for this early in the game. So I'm going to meet you guys back at that fork in the path, all right? All right, and here we are. Now from here, we're going to proceed west. There's a sign up ahead. I forget what this one says. Waterfall ahead. No littering. Alright then. I don't know. Who who wouldn't litter in a waterfall anyways? Do people actually do that? Also, did you see when we went down this uh, level? Music went a half step lower, I believe. I don't actually... Well, I don't know if this one is a half step. But I know in other games it is. Um, but yeah, it's a really awesome transition. This is the final floor. This is where we will uh, see if we can find this dang <laughs> crystal ball. This room is really pretty, actually. I never took the time to actually, you know, take in my surroundings, but really nice blue color all around. Well, that is a floating crystal ball. Don't know why it's just floating there, but I think this is what we're looking for. A crystal ball is suspended in the air. Reach out and take it. Yeah, give me that. Oh, you know what I should have said? I should have... Surprise! Surprise! Meet Giza. I am the master of this waterfall. Yes, this is Giza. Okay. I should have said something. Before you reach out and grab that crystal ball, you it I'll, I'll give you a hint. You might want to heal yourself up. Make sure you're in good condition for a fight. That's all I'll say. Anyways, meet Giza the first. As you can see, Geezer has an issue mixing up his dang words. Does this Bristol call Crystal Ball belong to you? Um. Well, we might just want to say yes. A little white lie never hurt. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> At last. <laughs> At last we fit mace to mace. You. With human, now I'll teach you a moron. Arrows, I mean a lesson. You won't forget. All right, <laughs> another warning. You better prepare your ears because it is the. Ah, what the heck did I just say? It's the debut of the mini boss theme, or the mid boss theme, or the not final boss theme. Whatever you want to call it, man, this song goes in. Okay. Now, yeah, Geezer is going to challenge us because I don't know what his issue is, but he thinks we're guilty of something. Now, this is why I meant you want to make sure your health is, is up high. It doesn't have to be 100% full, but this is our first boss fight. Now, I can finally go over the, the function of Psych Up. Psych Up is really awesome, in my opinion, if you're asking me. What Psych Up does is you... Actually, let me just show it off here. As you can see, Vice increases, increases his tension up to 5. Now, what does that mean? We'll go over it after he throws up this cursed miss. As you can see, Vice is not affected. That's very interesting. What Psyching Up does is it increases your attack power and I believe your defense if you Psych Up enough. Um, now, you can choose to Psych Up once and then attack. Your attack will be a bit stronger. You can actually Psych Up twice and your attack will be much stronger. 
you can psych up up to three times and your attack will be significantly stronger. This is what is going to be my main strategy for uh, most of the boss fights. Psyching up is, is almost preserved for boss fights. You can obviously use it whenever you want, but it is super useful. Now, Yangus is cursed, unfortunately, meaning he cannot move this turn because of that curse missed. Man, he hits hard. Oh my goodness, I forgot how hard he hits. Man, oh man. Okay, um, in fact, Yangus, just use an herb because I'm, I don't want you to get hit again. Vice is going to psych up up to 50. That is the highest you can go for now. He reaches a state of high tension. Now, it's a good thing we healed Yangus this turn because he's going to need it. So he's right back up to a pretty good HP. Not the best, but could be much, much worse. So now we're going to attack with Vice, and it's going to do a whole lot of damage. Um, I'm also going to psych up with y Actually... Because I feel like he's going to do a Cursed Mist again. I'll just attack for now. You don't want to psych up and then have Yangus not be able to move. Because if you do something other than attack or use a spell after you psych up, your, um, your tension will go back to normal. So you'll pretty much waste it. As you can see, 62 damage. That is a ton for level 7. Let me tell you, man. So we're going to start the cycle again. Yangus can't move, as we know. But Vice is going to psych up. And we keep this, uh, we keep this, this sort of high damage whatever you want to call it we keep that moving now Sizz is interesting Sizz will hit both of us it is uh, the first offensive spell well, not the first but one of the first we've seen speaking of spells that's also another update um, because of my grinding session leveling up Vice has learned two spells he knows heal and squelch heal has the same effect as a medicinal herb almost completely um, it just restores at least 30 HP squelch has the same effect as an anadolu herb it will cure the effects of poison um, we're not going to use that this turn, I don't believe. We're just going to psych up again, and Yangus can't do a regular attack. And I'm in a pretty comfortable place, but that, that really hurts, man. He hits hard, hard. As you can see, if we were anything under level 7, I think we'd be in a much tougher spot. Um, I'm going to have Yangus use one of his medicinal herbs and heal up Vice this turn. Hopefully we go before him. Hopefully Yangus does. Actually, I don't think he will. High tension. Come on, Yangus. Dang it. Okay, well, that's not bad. Nice, and he wasn't affected either. That's ideal. That's what you want to happen. Now, something to note is that some force seems to be pre uh, preventing Vice from being cursed. Um, that will be significant later, but for now, we're, we're getting the first signs of his sort of seeming immunity to curses. Now, we're going to go all out this turn. 61. That's nice damage, man. That is good damage. Now that's going to do a nice 18. That's going to hurt, man. But for now, I think... Mm, I think I might just do regular attacks. Nice. Okay, I had a feeling. Geezer is defeated. Guys, you just made it past your first Dragon Quest VIII boss fight. Congratulations, man. 107 experience points. And 108 gold. He dropped a chest, and it contains a seed of strength. I don't know how rare that is, but I think it's really rare for him to drop a chest. So that's awesome. Ever since I got this, I've not been right quite. Yeah, we can tell, man. And it's all because of you. See, now, there's definitely some misunderstanding because I have never seen this dude before. What? You don't know what I'm talking about? Mm -mm. Then you... You're not the true owner of this crystal ball. No! The shame. The shame. So strong. Strong enough to withstand my fearsome might. You are no Tortune fella. Wait, could you be the waterfall rears many humors, you know? I hear that a castle called Trodane has been cursed. That it was run over, overrun by thorns. And that only one person inside survived. He said, on a journey, living a course and heart with a lone driver. That should sound uh, that should sound scarily familiar to you. 
Also, I can't talk today. What the heck is going on? Ooh, this looks like the opening cutscene. It looks a lot like it. As you can see, this imagery of thorns completely taking over Castle Trodain. Um, presumably the castle, the kingdom that King Trode rules over. And that looks like us. Right, we got what we came here for. One last thing. Should you meet the true owner of this crystal ball, tell him this from me. Don't throw things in the fall water. So where the fell. So I guess we just have to assume that that's definitely Calderasha. He must have thrown this down here at some point, and it, I guess, hit Geezer and made him the way that he is. But for now, I actually failed to mention the final spell that Vice learned during my grinding session, a spell called Evac. Evac is awesome because it allows you to exit instantaneously from any dungeon, cave, or tower. Um, really good because if you don't know this spell, which is why I recommend grinding, then you would have had to go backtrack all the way through this cave to exit. We can just click one spell, cast evac, and we're out of here. And now that we're outside, we can use one of our five Camaro wings, that's a nice number to have, and come back to Fairbury. Man, that was a nice that was a nice visit, man. I always love Geezer. He he has so much nostalgia for me being the first boss fight of this game. Uh, I just have so many great memories. There were times when I didn't know how the heck to beat him because I would never get high enough levels. I just thought sometimes that he was impossible. You literally cannot beat him. But no, if you just if you just literally put in the tiniest amount of work and you will be at a great level and you'll be able to take him out with ease. Well, not with ease, but relatively easy. Um, ma, 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 ma. Now, one thing I forgot to mention from last episode. You can go down wells. In fact, if you go down this well right here, you will find a chest, and inside that chest will be a leather shield. That's how I got two of them. I put one of them on Yangus, and I bought one for Vice. So, just, uh, just look out for wells. You always want to check them out. Anyways, let's see if Valentina or Calderasha is home. Oh, cutscene. I knew you would return before long. And it seems you have done as Valentina asked. You see, even with a glass ball, the great Calderasha's eyes see further than you realize. But you are meddling in matters that do not concern you, and you are wasting your time. You can bring back my crystal ball as many times as you like. I will just throw it away again. What? Don't throw things in the waterfall. It might open up an old wound. What on earth are you talking about? Enough. Listen to me. No one knows why I threw away my crystal ball. Even Valentina has no idea. I'm not about to confide in a stranger. Give it to me! This time I will smash it into a million pieces, so it never finds its way back to me again! Stop! Please stop, Father. I know. I've known for ages. I know why you threw away your crystal ball. Oh, wait a minute. I hate to interrupt, but if you don't soak in this music right now, you might just be a crazy person. Oh my god. Goodness. You... you know? So you know about your real parents? 
Yes. And I don't blame you for their death. Why not? How can you not blame me, Valentina? How can you not hate me? Because you were just fortune telling. Just doing what you do best. I was too young to remember, but you were once a truly great fortune teller, weren't you, father? No one knew where my parents had fled to, but to you, it was as clear as day. Ah. Back then, there was nothing I could not see. The great Kaldarasha was known all over the world. I was walking on air. Fortune telling was my life. It was my soul. I thought only of myself. Be they good or bad. I cared not who asked me to use my crystal ball. I lived for the vision. It's all right, father. You're a good man. You took me in and raised me, didn't you? When I was just a helpless baby, I want to see it for myself. I want to see the great Kaldarasha in all his glory. I want to see your magnificent powers at work again, father. Oh, my sweet Valentina. That was beautiful, man. Ah, oh, it just pulls at your dang heartstrings, especially because of the music in the background. Okay, I know, I know. Uh, it was, it was a, it was such a good scene, man. Ooh, also, guys, recording is at 35 minutes. I'm really sorry if this episode runs long, but we only have a little bit more to go, and then I'll wrap it up. Okay? Oh, I gotta move fast. Another cutscene. We slept over. Now what's happening? Ooh, that's a new crystal ball. He's using it. So, you are awake at last. It is already past midday. You must have been exhausted. I must thank you and your friend. Look, I have put my crystal ball back where it belongs. Many years have passed since I gazed into the crystal like this. I have to thank you for returning it to me. What is this? Ooh, that's not good. Does not sound good. Yes, yes. I see it. I see it. There is a jester. A jester breaking through the southern checkpoint. Yes, the mists are clearing. And the same jester murdered Master Rylos. It's gotta be Domagus, man. Yes, yes. The mists are clearing. Can it be? Surely not. He has changed. But there can be no mistake. It has to be Master Rylos' former pupil, Dulmagos. Hmm. Uh, what? <laughs> Yankus heard that. Gav, he said Dulmagos, right? That's our man. That's the evil magician. You and the old granddad are after, innit? So where'd he go after that? What else can you deduct? What else? Let me look deeper. Huh? What's this? Yes, no question. This is definitely my old crystal ball, but look here. It has been chipped. <laughs> it must have hit something very hard to do this damage. Oh, yeah. And look, someone had scratched some letters next to the chip. What? Halfwit? Who's the halfwit? What ignorant lowlife would do this to my crystal ball? You what? When I ask what else you could see, I didn't mean on the ball, I mean in the ball. Whatever. I'll oh, come and gov. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna have to call it there. I'm sorry if this one ran long, alright? If you did enjoy, you can always give it a like. If you did not, you can just like and tell me what I can do to improve these episodes in the comments. With all of that said, guys, I have been Vice and this has been Dragon Quest 8. I'm gonna let that outro do its thing and I'll catch you guys in the next one, alright? I'm out of here.